If you're at a job that you love, then this video is not for you. But if you've ever thought about saving up to quit your job and start a business, or you want to have enough in assets and investment returns to cover your lifestyle, then keep watching this video. Because nothing feels more soul sucking than spending one third of your life at a job that you hate, counting down the days until the weekend, and then feeling absolute dread on Sunday nights because the cycle has to start all over again. Every two weeks you get paid. You spend most of that money and then you count down the days until your next payday. You find yourself stuck in this vicious trap and you wonder to yourself, what is even the purpose of life? Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Alice and I'm a chartered professional accountant and a corporate escapee. If you find my content valuable, I actually heard that hitting the thumbs up button actually helps you get one step closer to financial freedom. The first and biggest habit that keeps people stuck in the nine to five grind is also the most dangerous one and the most subconscious one. And that is if you are drifting through life and going through the motions of the day to day with no real goal or purpose. If you're not acting on ways to advance yourself, to improve your financial situation to a point where you can quit your job, then it will probably never happen. I'll get into more details in this video, but the first real habit is actually to change the way that you think. The longer that you drift, the longer that'll take you to quit your nine to five. And how you live your next decade is based on the actions that you take in this decade. If you drift for your entire twenties, you will wake up when you are 30, realizing that nothing has changed. If you then carry that momentum into your thirties, you will wake up when you're 40 and realize the same thing. And nothing is more painful truly than waking up at the half point of your life only to realize that your life outcome is not what you had wanted solely because of your own decisions. Realistically speaking, becoming financially free is going to take a ton of work and commitment. And it starts with you showing up for yourself every day consistently until it happens. I meet and talk to successful business owners on a daily basis. I also have many business mentors that are also very successful millionaires. And I promise you that they all have the same way of thinking. And that is that they're all extremely action and goal oriented people. If you do not set goals and self actualize your way there, you don't have a purpose for yourself in life and a roadmap and a vision of where you want to go step by step, you will easily, very easily get lost and distracted in the day-to-day -day of life without even realizing. So having a real plan first and foremost, and having a goal to work towards is number one. Your goals can change. They should change as you get better. And only you can do this for yourself because the easiest thing to do in life is to talk about your goals. And the hardest thing to do in life is to actually work towards them and self actualize without the temptation of complaining, making excuses or feeling sorry for yourself. Being able to quit your job means that you have enough money saved up to live, to invest or to start your own business. Now, if you're not in that situation, then you're going to have to find ways now to increase your earning ability. Video up top here where I talk about how to increase your earning ability in life. The primary reason why people stay stuck in the rat race is because they simply do not make enough money at their job. And this can be handled in multiple ways. One of them is merit-based compensation, meaning that typically as you increase in seniority or into a management position, a larger portion of your salary will be bonus or equity based of which both are performance driven. So in a given year, your annual income can increase dramatically depending on how well you perform and how well your company performs. I think in a corporate role, the best thing to do is to go work somewhere where you're compensated for the upside of the company, especially in any non-sales positions. And if you do not work in a role that directly impacts revenue, then getting into a position where your income is tied to a KPI that is measurable and that you can directly impact with your own skills and are responsible for. So if you can help a company save money, save time, impact efficiency, impact accuracy, impact productivity, launch projects, these are all valuable skills with measurable and quantifiable outcomes that can be tied into your pay structure. If you work in a sales or a marketing position where your income is directly attributed to your ability to increase the company's top line, make sure you work for a company that offers an attractive commission or bonus structure that reflects your ability to market and sell for that company. The idea is that you want leverage over your ability to earn. 
But to realize that leverage into more money, you have to be really good at what you do. So ask yourself, if you were the top performer at your company, how much could you possibly earn? It's easy to think about how to save more money. It's easy to think about cutting on expenses. It takes a lot of skill to figure out how to make more money with the time that you have. So look at the positions open in your current company, investigate which of those have the biggest capacity to earn, and think of what skills it will take for you to get into those roles. When I was in corporate, my compensation was based on number of years of post-designation experience, depth of management experience, and industry-specific skill set. I didn't have any impact on sales and marketing because I am a CPA, nor was I in any role that directly impacted revenue, but I always made sure to go to places that rewarded based on merit in a rising industry for a growing company with an attractive bonus structure. And today, many of these jobs are in software and tech industries. Working at a company that is merit-based that will reward you based on performance with some sort of equity upside or attractive bonus structure is the way to go. There are many people in this world that work very hard and try very, very hard at everything they do, but do not end up being successful. Working hard is just one piece of the puzzle. It is so, so important that you ask the right questions in life and that you apply yourself in the right way that will yield you the most amount of benefit in your career or your job. Let's talk about saving money. The main goal that you want to work towards is to have some cash reserves in the bank and enough money in the bank because you cannot quit your job without something in reserve. Starting a business requires money and a lot of time, and you want to get into the habit of being a saver by training yourself to be someone who likes to see their cash reserves grow. You will need the skill if you want to become a business owner. You will need the skill if you want passive income. If you do not have the financial habits or the skill set to survive, even if you do temporarily quit your job, you may eventually have to go back without the right skills. Saving money is something you have to be disciplined with no matter how much money you make in life, but probably more so when you quit your job because more money does not solve your problems unless you know how to delay the gratification with the money that you do have. And so I'm a big believer that you never want to be in any position where you overextend yourself at any point in your life. Spending more than a third of your income on anything, whether it's a mortgage, rent, your car, it's going to make trying to leave the rat race very, very hard. Lifestyle creep, keeping up with the Joneses. This one is a double-edged sword because when you spend money to buy things to impress other people, the only person that hurts is yourself. Lifestyle creep is when your income does increase, but then you spend it all. And this is on very minor things. So upgrading grocery stores, upgrading to first class airlines, spending money on vacations, buying more expensive cars. And maybe it's not to impress other people. It could just be because you like nice things. I like nice things too. One or two of these things might not impact your savings overall, but multiple of these things over and over will impact your expectations and the higher your lifestyle expectations, the harder and harder and harder it will be to quit your job. Now, if your goal in life is to work until you're 65, then you know you wouldn't be watching this video. But if that's the case, it's completely fine to buy whatever you want and spend whatever you make. It doesn't matter, honestly, if your goal is just to be like everyone else. But if you want to live a life that other people do not have, then you have to pay the price today. It is human nature to want to spend money and have nice things. But if you cannot pay that price today, then that day in the future when you can spend money to buy whatever you want and have ultimate freedom, that day will never happen if you cannot pay the price today. We can buy whatever we want on credit today. Every department store you go to can offer you a credit card. You can even finance a phone over 24 months. The average American household is $8,718 in debt because we are a consumption-based society that buys everything on credit. But if you buy on credit, you finance everything you buy and you don't make the full payments, you're setting yourself up for financial quicksand. That's a lot of interest that's burning through your income and it hurts your ability to save and invest. So if you are paying for vacations with your credit card, if you're taking out loans for furniture and appliances, if you're buying the latest TVs and electronics on payment plans, if you accept every single credit card limit that you're offered and you spend up to it, and you are overextending yourself on auto loans or car leases, all of these things end up being financial quicksand.
Now, assuming that you're doing all of the above, you're earning more, you're saving more, you're not spending on credit and you have the ability to invest your savings. Well, what do you do with this cash and how much cash do you actually need to hold? This one really is personal preference, but I highly encourage you if your goal is to quit your job to always keep enough cash reserves, AKA an emergency fund to handle the financial risk of being on your own. Having an emergency fund, whether you have a job, whether you have a business, you're self-employed, whatever it is, having enough cash reserves can never hurt you. I encourage you to have at least a minimum of 12 months of full emergency funds at all times if you can, but especially if you want to quit your job. In my opinion, if you have all of your capital tied up into real estate or investments with no cash and you're in a tight situation where you have to turn something around or pay for a bill or you need cash in a situation, it's going to be super stressful and super tight. So I always like to make sure that I have enough liquidity because I am risk averse, but you calculate what that means for you before you quit. So if you want to leave the rat race, you're going to need some way of replacing your job's income. And the thing that keeps people stuck in the rat race is never having that second source or other way to make money in their life. The easiest thing that you can do is to start a service-based business to monetize a skill that you already have. If you're an accountant, selling accounting services and getting your own clients for bookkeeping and taxes is going to be your best option with the highest likelihood of success. If you want to quit your job, you have a couple of options for income, business, rental income from real estate or investment income from marketable securities. Realistically, it is very hard to create meaningful passive income from investments until you have a pretty large investment portfolio. Check out my video up top here where I talk about how much money you need in investments to live off of dividend income. And with rental income, you need a down payment, which means that you need enough cash flow from your properties to be able to pay for your expenses. And with business, you need to make a lot of sacrifice, work very hard and have extreme discipline and consistency for a long period of time. There are a lot of reasons that can cause someone to be stuck in the rat race. It's usually a combination of financial and non-financial reasons because it's not just money that gets you out of the rat race, but it's also the way that you think. You know, I personally still believe that careers are great. And if it wasn't for my career, there's no way that I would be who I am today. But thinking back to my corporate journey, I met so many smart and so many talented people when I work there that I learned from and whom I have respect for. And in hindsight, I extremely needed those years of life experience. Otherwise there would basically be a 0% chance of me surviving as a business owner and a 0% chance of me surviving on social media if it wasn't for my corporate experience. And so nothing against careers or jobs at all, because I know the value that a career can give to your life. But if you're at a job that you hate and it really is eating up a big part of your life and you're like me, the version of me three or four years ago, wondering if you're just destined to be stuck there forever, it's okay. Maybe life is setting you up for the next thing. I'm a very firm believer that in life you can have anything that you want so long as you set your mind to it and you work towards it. And I continually prove to myself that this fact is true. By the way, if you don't know what I'm talking about, make sure you check out my video up top where I talk about my story of why I quit my $150,000 nine to five job. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Until next time.